and just starting out, um, Dominique, um, I just want to know what was the first feeling that you felt when you heard news of everything that happened at the AME church I mean, in Charleston this morning? When I first got the call, my dad first called me, I, I was immediately, um, I was immediately stunned. Um, I mean, this, in my lifetime, I have seen, I've seen a lot of tragedy and a lot of what's feelings and a lot of things that, um, take place. But for me, this, like, really startled me. Um, I was shocked. I honestly didn't even believe it. I had to turn on the news and, um, you know, turn on my phone and actually start looking at blogs and looking at what was, the, you know, what the news was reporting and honestly believe it at first. When I started seeing that it was actually real, like, I mean, the feeling of just numbness, the feeling of disappointment. Things that made me kind of feel helpful because when is this going to stop and what am I doing wrong or what am I not doing enough of? You know, it just ignites me to, I just want to do more. I feel like we're not we confronting our youth enough. This guy, this suspect in custody is in his early 20s, you know? And yeah. like, what has he been exposed to? At such a young age, with just hatred, to want to actually pick up a time and actually do something like he did. So we've got to really start confronting the mentality of our youth and the mentality of what we are uh, portraying and what we are doing on the ground, especially in the community. What we are doing in our own neighborhood to actually deal with the issues of mental illness, these issues of hatred and anger. Our young people feel, uh, you know, that they have to now lash out in violent ways yeah. in order to um, to be seen and be heard. And I think that that is a real, it's a serious issue that we have to really, really deal with especially in this country now. And when you um, talk about the young people that you are working with, how many of these young people, because of what they're being exposed to and the things that they're seeing and the hi the history that they're witnessing, kind of feel like, you know, the fight is over. I'm, I'm black. I'm, I'm a minority. I've already lost. Well, the fight is far from over. I just feel like we need to change the mindset. We need to change the healthy mindset, even that I had, like when I first was um, we've got to counter that with love. We've got to counter that with um, enabling and, 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 and restoring faith and restoring hope in our community, especially in the minds of our youth. Yeah. Um, and what is it going to take? No, we can't, you know, we can't promise that tomorrow a police officer won't, won't shoot another black person in the back. We can't promise that, unfortunately, another, um, you know, person full of hatred will go in and support church. And kill nine people. We can't, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we can conquer today. We can, um, you know, do what we can in our communities to restore that faith, to restore hope, to enlighten and encourage young people that, you know, that they matter, that all lives matter. Um, your family, and I know that you've just recently gotten to the area where everything took place. Can you describe, like, what is the feeling there? I mean, even probably the airport is a little bit crazy. I, um, I know that you just yeah, recently got there. Yeah, there's a feeling here. I'm not happy having to come here. I'm not, um, I, like I said, I feel, I feel hopeless. I'm scared, you know, as wow. a young woman of color yes. who is, you know, with a strong voice. I'm scared. Yes. I don't really want to expect going in, you know, into this. I don't know how many more people feel the way this young man felt. I many people are everywhere. Um, you know, I have friends that live in Charleston that call me that I spoke to today that are just like, you know, I'm just fine. I'm, I'm set up. I, you know, I never thought that it would be like right outside my door. We've got to come together now and we've got to be peaceful and we've got to counter anger and hatred with love and respect for each other. And we the younger generation, like I'm 23 years old. Um, uh, the guy who committed the murders in the church was only 21 years old. So this is yeah. now a millennial issue. What is it that you think that young people can do? You know, I advise people to use social media, voice your opinion there. Even if it's just an opinion, it matters. What do you, as someone who comes from the Sharpton family, who's been very influential in helping voices be heard, advise us young people to do to kind of, you know, take a stand if we maybe can't be there or if we want to be there, but we feel like our voices aren't important. I was just saying, I just feel like we should, you know, everyone is, is, is created for a certain purpose. So I feel like right now, all we can do is tap into what will make us better people, what we can do to fulfill our purpose in life. And I think that what will make us better people is to actually get up every day, you know, because you don't know if it's going to be our last. Amen. We're living in that type of era. That's true. Where, you know, anything. And she's already going to pop off at any given time. Yeah. So he's got to understand and wake up 
and they know if today is my last day, how do I fulfill and why am I not all that I could? Or those people who walked into that church in the beginning of that service did not know that their that would be the last day that they lived and they did not know that their death would change so much in our, our American history, so much for young African Americans to come, older African Americans. Like they did not know that their life meant so much in, in when it comes to the change that is gonna happen um in our nation because of what took place last night. So definitely yeah, what you're saying is right, like Oh, yeah, the Birmingham, that, yes. That church was gone in, in Alabama. And those who want those little girls in had no idea that they would be martyred only. Um, it's just like those martyred people last night, which I know are fear. And so we've got to take, you know, our anger, we've got to take the passion, we've got to take the rage of chaos, and we've got to turn it into something active. We've got to turn it into something that is actually going to make a difference. And not, you know, not, not, um, we can't confront anger with anger. We can't confront hate with more hate. You know, we've got to confront it from a, you know, and challenge ourselves as well as individually to get involved and really pushing for the things that we want to see. We don't want this to continue to happen. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out. Um, you just landed in Charleston. I wish you and you, the National Action Network the best of luck down there. And if there's any way that 2LTV yeah. can help out um, while you guys are there, just shoot me an email or a text. Um, and I just thank you again. I called you Spread the Moment. And she was so willing to help, guys. You were amazing. Um, and just thank you so much. As always, guys, this is Lauren LaRosa for 2LTV. This is my first one-on-one -on -one vlog with you guys where I'm just chatting. I want you guys to definitely talk, talk back. Like, this is a speak-out series. I want you guys to speak about what it is that you feel um, when it comes to the Charleston Massacre that just recently occurred where nine black lives were taken um, due to the hate of African-American people. I've expressed my thoughts. Um, we have Ms. Dominique Sharpton who weighed in on her thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts. And the heart and soul of South Carolina was broken. And so we have some grieving too. And we've got some pain we have to go through. The president noticeably shaken. Any death of this sort is a tragedy. Any shooting involving multiple victims is a tragedy. There is something particularly heartbreaking about death happening in a place in which we seek solace, we seek peace, in a place of worship. By mid-morning, authorities receive a tip from someone who thinks they recognize the shooter's car driving in Shelby, North Carolina, some 250 miles west of Charleston. 10.43 a.m. Our officers observed the vehicle traveling west on Dixon Boulevard. The suspect was stopped by officers at 10.44 a.m. The officers identified the only occupant of the vehicle, Dylan Ruth. Mr. Ruth was taken into custody at 10.49 a.m. He was transported here to Shelby Point. The is now in custody. The immediate threat to the community no longer exists and we'll let the legal process run its course 